Hello everyone, welcome to Samara Training Services. Today we're going to discuss managing uh, risks in the workplace. First of all, we need to go through some basic definitions. To begin with, we need to discuss the meaning of the term hazard. Hazard refers to anything that has the potential to cause harm, whether that thing is material, an energy, an activity, or a piece of equipment that we use in the workplace. Secondly, we need to also discuss the meaning of the term risk. Now, hazard and risk are used interchangeably usually, however, they do have different meanings. The difference between hazard and risk is that hazard, as we discussed, means anything that has the potential to cause harm, while risk uh, indicates two factors that we need to take into account. The first one is the likelihood. So, how likely is that hazard going to cause us harm. Secondly, it also takes into account the consequences. So how serious is the harm that is going to result from that hazard? Of course, there's a wide range of uh, consequences that can result from the same hazard. Uh, it ranges between uh, property or asset damage and all the way into multiple fatalities. And that's why it's very, very important to identify clearly what kind of potential consequences can result from each hazard. That takes us into the third concept, which is an essential concept in managing health and safety at work. And that concept is risk assessment. Risk assessment is a legal requirement in most countries around the world. Um, and it, it means the structured approach to uh, our procedure for identifying hazards and risks, uh, evaluating the level of risk, taking into account the current control measures, if we have any, and also um, the, taking into account or, or uh, evaluating the level of control measures that we might need to, to use in order to reduce the level of risk. Now, hazards can be identified or categorized into two groups. We have physical hazards in addition to health hazards. Physical hazards uh, usually refer to the hazards that cause accidents rather than diseases. So, these hazards uh, cover a wide range of examples. So, things like plant and machinery or mechanical hazards, it includes uh, hazards from uh, the use of hand tools, um, things like fire, falls from height, slips, trips, uh, and falls, as you can see here on the list. And then on the other side, we also have health hazards, and these are associated with occupational diseases or um, syndromes. Okay, so these also cover a wide range. They cover topics like chemical hazards, biological agents, noise, vibration, etc. Now, what you will notice from this list is that sometimes for the same hazard, you can have two implications, safety and health uh, consequences. So sometimes there is an overlap, and that also indicates why it's very, very important to analyze each hazard and activity that you have in the workplace as much as possible to cover all the potential scenarios. Now, the steps of a risk assessment um, typically fall into the following uh, steps that you can see here on the screen. So it starts with identifying the significant risks and ignoring the, the, the minor ones. It's very important to meet the legal requirements as we mentioned earlier because risk assessment uh, is going to be verified by authorities and inspected uh, probably. Uh, we're going to make sure that we cover the most important and significant hazards that we have in the workplace, which are relevant to our industry. Um, this we can find out through our uh, accident log, our best practice, or even from within the industry, we can highlight what are the most common hazards. We also need to identify and prioritize the measures required to comply with the relevant statutory provisions, and that's why it's very important for each uh, risk assessment to be um, very focused on the type of organization that we have uh, in place in order for it to be relevant and meet the legal requirements and expectations of the organization. 
It also needs to remain appropriate to the nature of work and valid over a reasonable period of time. Now, the term reasonable um, is kind of elastic, uh, but generally speaking, it needs to be, the risk assessment, assessment needs to be valid over uh, a suitable period of time because risk assessments are lengthy and costly for organizations. So we need to use the time as much as possible, use all the resources to make it relevant and to make it current as much as possible. We also uh, need to identify the risk arising from or in connection with the work. As mentioned earlier, it's important that the risk assessment is relevant to the organization. And finally, finally the level of detail should be proportionate to the risk. Naturally, high risks require more analysis and more uh, in-depth um, uh, details. Now in terms of the steps and stages of risk assessment, the first stage is identifying hazards, for example slips, trips and falls. Uh, these are going to vary depending on what type of organization that we have, what type of activities and the size of organization. The next step is going to be identifying persons affected, for example, the uh, workers, the public, can also cover visitors, contractors, etc. So we need to take into account any person or any, um, any entity that might be affected by our uh, activities and not just only focus on our uh, employees. Third, we need to evaluate the level of risk and adequacy of our current controls, of course, uh, assuming that we have current, uh, current control measures, if not, then that indicates we need to move uh, into maybe deciding the suitable control measure. And then moving on to recording significant findings. Because we mentioned earlier, risk assessments are a legal requirement, so we need to have some sort of a record to be used as an evidence to present to authorities in case something goes wrong. So really it provides protection to, to the management and to the organization. And finally, we need to review the risk assessment on a regular basis. If you go through the legal requirements, there is no set time, uh, time limit where you need to review the risk assessment, but usually it will take into account um, several factors, things like the amount of or period of time that has passed, whether there has been new um, records of accidents or injuries uh, recorded, etc. Speaking about recording risk assessments, uh, there have been uh, several, there are several examples of templates and systems which are available to use by employers in order to record risk assessment findings. This is an example that we see here on the screen. It's important in, uh, when recording risk assessments to uh, first of all describe uh, the activity that we have assessed. Uh, the control measures, the existing ones, if there are any, level of likelihood identified, consequences, and the level of risk that we have identified. It's also important to document what additional control measures we have, uh, we are considering or we are going to implement, and the residual risk uh, arising from using these control measures. Naturally, we would expect the likelihood, the consequences, and the level of risk to be reduced as a result. Um, it's also important when uh, conducting a risk assessment to take into account vulnerable groups that we can see here on the screen. So young persons at, at work who are maybe less experienced or uh, less trained, less, less knowledgeable of, of the work procedures and, and the work hazards. Lone workers who are usually working on their own without the supervision and the support that they might require. Expectant or nursing mothers are usually very vulnerable. And then finally, people with special needs or disabled people, particularly if it's a mobile disability or hearing disability, and especially in cases of emergencies that require evacuation. So all of these factors are important to consider when carrying out a risk assessment. on to the, the topic or the next step that we, we need to consider uh, conducting a risk assessment, which is the hierarchy of control measure. So what options do we have as managers or employers in order to reduce the level of risk? An excellent example is the hierarchy of control measure that we can see here on the screen. 
starts with elimination, which is the ideal solution uh, for uh, high risks. It basically indicates eliminating the activity, the material, or the equipment that we are using. The only problem with that is that it's not always practical to eliminate hazards. And that's why we have a second option, which is substitution. Maybe substituting a chemical or material that is harmful with a less harmful uh, material, or substituting uh, an activity or a piece of equipment that uh, creates less risk to our uh, employees. A common control measure is engineering controls because it's practical, it allows uh, employers to be innovative and creative, and that uh, covers examples like using physical barriers, like using guards, using sensors or alarms. And then we also have administrative control measures or um, safe systems of work, and that gives us examples like permit to work system, uh, risk assessments, etc. And finally, the least effective control measure is personal protective equipment. It is still a control measure, it is widely used in workplaces. However, we need to remember that PPE on its own is not an adequate control measure because it has a lot of limitations. Of course, what you need to remember, uh, taking into account the LR principle, which is a key principle to understand for a health and safety professional. LR means, uh, it's a principle and it means as low as reasonably practicable. So by law, we are required to reduce the, the risk as low as reasonably practicable. This is very helpful for uh, employers because it sets realistic expectations from employers. It makes it possible for them to come up with creative solutions to health and safety issues, balancing safety against cost, time, and effort. So it's important to balance between both uh, ends of the equation. It's also important to take into account emergency procedures when conducting risk assessments. Of course, emergencies have, there are several examples uh, that we can mention. So fire, accidents, floods, earthquakes, high winds, or severe illnesses or infections. All of these are issues that we also need to take into account when conducting our risk assessment and to plan ahead for them. I hope this was useful and interesting for all of you. Thank you all for joining us and we're looking forward to having you in our center.